メリークリスマスハッピーニューイヤー What's up, Moonies? This is Bobby, the curator of Sailor Symphony. I want to start the year off a bit differently with something I've been planning to do for quite some time. The talk series is a new video series where I discuss a few musical insights into Sailor Moon music or Sailor music from my perspective as a practicing musician and composer. So, in this first video, I'm going to explore just why we love 90s Sailor Moon music so very much. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like or comment, or you can subscribe to us. We've reached over 5,000 subscribers. Thank you very much for following, sharing, liking. So, without further ado, let's begin. The original score from 1992 owes much to the successful original soundtracks, or OSTs, of the 70s and 80s anime like Cutie Honey, Mobile Suit Gundam, Lupin the Third, And Toei's mega hit Dragon Ball. Those studio recorded old Hollywood scores were a blend of American pop and film scoring, classical music, and a little bit of Japanese enka. Certainly, Sailor Moon's composer, Takanori Arisawa, took notice. Our soldiers' action sequences are high energy, brassy disco anthems that get your heart pumping. While their tearful goodbyes and budding romances pull at your heartstrings with, well, Heart strings, woodwinds, and piano. These musical tropes are like comfort food for our ears. The correlations between action and music are what we've been exposed to since the golden age of television. Take a listen and a look at this melody called I'm Just an Ordinary Girl. It features an obvious homage to disco, sweeping strings, pumping brass hits, and a funky rhythm section, but also reminds us very much of instantly recognizable Charlie's Angels theme. The 90s score caught our ear because it was speaking a language we already understood fluently. Have you heard the word motif? Motifs are recurring musical figures that play important roles in composition. Arisawa's score features a lot of clever motifs and themes that tie each season to one another. Many motifs first introduced in season one are expanded upon in subsequent seasons. For example, the villainous melody. This unsuspecting half step slow descent into hell lurks in every malefic musical cue. Also, Sailor Moon's transformation sequences feature similar opening calls, a string of notes equidistant from each other or stacked in fourths for us musicians, which creates an open and resonant tone like church bells announcing the start of something spectacular. Many fans cite Season 3's Sailor Moon Super as their favorite season. And I think it's because of the transition to a more cinematic score, not just because of the greatness of Uranus and Neptune. Seasons 1 and 2 were easy on the ears, featuring light hearted melodies and poppy background music, perfect for the everyday schoolgirls, and sweet strings for their tragic losses and darker moments. But the later seasons were a bit more complex. More orchestral sounds, instruments, and motifs were introduced, underscoring the conflicting emotions of complex characters like Nehelenia, the Outers, and the Starlights. As our girls evolved, so did their music. Now, I could be wrong, but Sailor Moon is one of the only anime I can think of that incorporates almost all of its endings and opening themes. Into the background music in some fashion. That was a very smart thing for the producers to do because it associated particular moments or feelings with these particular songs. Plus, on the business end, it made us want to buy the original songs so we can relive those experiences over and over again. Generally, all these J pop tunes were reworked as sentimental ballads and fit in during the most emotional moments each season. For instance, Chippyusa 
at Pegasus. The season one deaths of the inners. And in the soft, gentle moments of Sailor Stars. I can't tell you how many people were so upset that we didn't include wanting to be together with you in our first tribute to the soundtrack, but now we've certainly put it in there. Probably the biggest reason we love 90s Sailor Moon music is because we hear it all the time. The nature of a magical girl anime, especially in the 90s with a lot of recurring scenes and repeated sequences, reinforce the themes in our head and always play these musics back to us. Almost every episode featured of the pumping disco transformation soundtracks, which are huge fan favorites. And on the more musical side, a lot of the melodies and songs are singable, which means they're very easy to catch on and to hum or sing along to, mostly because there's not a lot of leaps between notes. We call it stepwise motion. A lot of the notes are adjacent to each other. Plus, the inclusion of voices singing Sailor Moon over and over again really helps drive the point home. Well, that's all I had for this first video for 2019. I'm really excited to continue uploading these analyses. Please let me know what you think, what you'd like for me to cover. Leave a comment below or join us on Patreon to help support the channel. Once again, my name is Bobby and thank you for watching Sailor Symphony. I'll see you in a few weeks. Special thank you to our top Patreon supporters, Adrian Lataste and KL May.